Well, welcome everyone to Logo Day. So today what we want to do is we want to focus just on the programming of the logo and work on this little corner because of the pieces that we have which are kind of vital to the operation of the robot in that we have the remote e-stop button. We've had conversations during our lectures about why a person might want to have an, uh, a remote e-stop button. So we created this and we actually made it ourselves. The e-stop button that we talked about already, the emergency stop buttons are located on several of the components. One of them here being on the teaching pendulum. The other one is actually on the controller. But those might be in an area where you can't reach or that if you're a passerby, yeah, you might see something happening so that you have that option to be able to hit this button. And we talked about other opportunities for using emergency stop buttons like at gas stations. So they are out there and uh, we're going to have one here that we're going to work on today. So the light stack that we have is set up for just the green and the red light. We do have some light stacks that have a yellow light like a, like a stop sign would be but this is really all we need for this application. The horn is mounted right here. This was donated by Amazon. It does have a red light so we have that option and it does it automatically but really what it's here for is the horn and then the e-stop button. The logo as we talked about is mounted on the table on this fancy stuff right here or this metal piece which is called DIN rail and I took the opportunity to wire some things up ahead of time so that we wouldn't be here all afternoon uh, wiring things so I took the initiative to try to put some things head, uh, ahead of time for example the controller is wired up and is connected back here by two brown wires uh, in our second part of the video I have a camera that's up over the top and we'll take a look at the wiring and the different connections unfortunately the camera that I have doesn't really take good close-ups so the images and stuff that you see are kind of janky and we're uh, Mr. Hagedorn has got a really nice camera that uh, the district has bought and he's been using that for his classes so I need to get that from him. The green wire which I wired ahead of time is coming from the power connector that's right over here. This is our 12 volt power supply mounted underneath the table coming up with the black wire which is the negative, the red wire is the positive and then we have a bunch of connections that all have been daisy chained so that we can use them. Let me just make sure they're all snugged up. I'm going to use that one here in a minute. We'll snug this one down. And then these are all tight. This one's loose. Don't know why. Okay. And I'm going to use that one here in a minute. So we want to be able to bring all of these components. Typically we have to have the energy to run them so we start with a 12 volt positive we find our pathway into these what they call wire trays we you see several of them on the table I just added these a couple of days ago it really does a nice job to be able to set the wires down inside and then we put caps over the top of these so that all of this stuff is not laying out in the open and they're all uh, it just looks real messy so we're focusing on cleaning this up but the the idea is I want to show you how the wire are connected and that when we hopefully in this class already we've done the programming for the logo now we only have to do the last thing is after we're done today is to show you how how we transfer the program from the computer down to the logo and then actually make this work now earlier today I set that up and I downloaded it so this one's ready to go all we have to do is turn it on and start it and then let's see if the e-stop button works. So pre-wired I brought in the power supply you can see the red and the black comes from the red and the black terminals and I have them over here on the ends L1 is where the red wire goes which is the 12 volt and then the black wire comes out on the M tab. There's an additional red and white that kind of double back onto one another and that's over here to jump out the uh, uh, the relay pack 
because they're not connected internally for power. They are connected internally, though, for that program to work within the logo machine, and then the outputs are wired internally, but not the power supply. The white wire is for our e-stop button. We don't need a ground wire for the e-stop button because the ground wire is done internally inside the logo. So we're bringing a white 12 volt, bringing it up to the light, connecting it, I'm not, not connecting to the light, connecting to the, uh, the uh, e-stop button. We have it connected to the normally closed contact. So it's actually hot right now and running 12 volts up into our logo. When I push on the button, then it would stop. And then by pushing on it, then we cause a reaction then to our, to our system. So let's go ahead and what I wanted to show you is actually do the wiring for the horn. But we have a bunch of connectors and I just want to show you how to put a connector on. So I have some uh, scrap wire here. I save all the wire. I, I try to, uh, uh, I guess I'm a real hoarder that it's kind of nice to have some of these short ends because we have brand new wire that's all ready to go for those of you that would win state and then represent Wisconsin at the nationals. You take brand new wire that's already set up in, the, uh, in your toolboxes so you don't need to have any of this stuff. But whenever we do wiring, I never throw it away. I always throw it back in the box because at some point you never know what you're going to need. So let's just take a look. So I've got a little bit of red, and then we're going to show you how to put one of these connectors on. The connectors are what we call spade connectors. And today, in our uh, spade box over there, I've got a couple different sizes. i got the fat ones and the skinny ones. Uh, both work equally well given the application that you're going to use them for. But unfortunately, though, the wider ones don't work for us very well here because there's a given slot and these connector runs don't adapt to the big ones. These work in our robot, uh, for the robot team, so we got plenty of those, but use the finer or the skinnier one, and that fits right in between the slots and then wraps right around the screw head, and then we can tighten that down. So these use all of, these are the ones that we want to use. Now, to actually connect it, uh, I have two wire strippers here because there's uh, advantages to, to both of them. This little yellow one, I'm gonna open up that tab. This little yellow one is nice because it has a really nice sharp edge that cuts wire right back here. This one cuts the wire, but not very nicely, and that's up here, and you can see this one's well-worn and really cuts for crap, really, uh, when, you, when you think about it. So this one is really nice. The other one that it has is it has the nice stripper heads where we can peel the insulation off of the wires. These are really sharp and they're numbered so that depending on the gauge wire that you have, you can put it in the various slot and then strip that out real nice. What I like this one though for is for crimping. This has the stripper as well, but it's on the inside and then you gotta try to fumble around and try to get the wire up in here. And if this end's connected already, it's really tough to get this down inside the robot. So I don't even use it for that. What I use it for is for crimping the, uh, the end connectors, the spade connectors. And you have two spots that you can use them for, uh, the different, different styles. This one will use the top one here. And you can actually see the red, the blue, and the yellow dot matches the spade connector that you're using. So we're gonna go red to red as soon as we get done. So first thing we wanna do is strip off a little bit of the insulation. Some of these wires already have insulation out, but the wire's been frayed out. So I just always clip the end off and make a new, new clean cut. This one now looks to be about 22 gauge. So I find that hole and then I, and I hold down and then I squeeze. Now I back off just a little bit because I don't want to press down on the actual wires and then it slides the insulation off just like that. So it's pretty easy to do. Uh, once you get back, I'm going to give you a handful of connectors and some wire and then you all can practice on these. This is almost mandatory 
in this class is to be able to connect and make these spade connectors. Now you don't need very much. I pull off about between a quarter and, a, and three eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to use uh, one of the fat connectors because I'm limited on the number of skinny ones. So I this, this is just for demonstration portions. So what I want to do then is slide this on. I always twist this, making sure that all the stray fragments are back together. And connect and slide this one in gently to make sure that all the wires get up inside. And then I just have a little tiny bit left up here at the top to hang over. Find your red dot and crimp it up right next to the end of the red coating there and then squeeze. If you get too far back, there's no metal back here. All it is is plastic and then you end up smashing the plastic piece and it, it doesn't look really nice. So there's a pretty nice looking connector the way we have it. So that this is the kind of stuff that we're looking for you to do. So that that's why I have two of them. You wouldn't necessarily need two of them, but this one just works so nice. Uh, and then when you're done, just push the little piece back together and then it holds them closed. And then the, those things stay nice and sharp. All right, so I have stuff that I've already prearranged, set up so that I don't have to spend a lot of time this first time I did this lecture, I practiced on it. I did it in like 30 minutes, and now I think I got it down to about 20, 15 to 20 minutes. So I've already got a spade connector already set up. I've, it's been in and out a couple of times. Notice that it's a little bit curved, and it sits on one side. Use that side when you're putting it into, and then they just they slide together better and connect better. And then we're going to follow it in the track. Just follow the rest of the wires. We're going to pull it out at the bottom. And then I've, I've, I've taken the insulation off about three-eighths of an inch. And then in the video part two, you have the camera that looks down on the top of this. And you'll be able to see how these, how these are all wired up. And then you use the small screwdriver to get in here. These are very cheap connectors. <laughs> don't hold very well. Uh, and then the other side of it, I have a yellow wire that does not have an end because the connector on the, on the horn doesn't have that. So now let's slide this in to this side. Tighten it down. Whoop, didn't work. I always give a tug on it. If it comes off, then you're in trouble. All right, so this then has to go. Uh, this one's already got three coming out. So we're going to follow it into that hole. And make sure it lays in the tray nicely. And then we're going to put it to one of the connectors here. I guess it really didn't seem, it didn't seem to matter when I was doing this whether this side was black or that side was yellow. Uh, it didn't really seem to matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this side. And you have to slide it between two pieces in here. And that holds it in. Yep. And then the black wire. I already got one set up. Actually, I pulled this one out of the box. You see it's got a different color on it. That's okay. They all work. We can tolerate one blue one, I guess. There's another blue one in here. And then we'll find... Now, this is the negative. So we want to find one that doesn't already have a couple of them on there. So, oh, you know what I did? It's on the wrong side. This is negative. We want this to be on the positive side. 
Why don't you guys say something? I'm not re-recording this just because I made that one mistake. Figured it out. All right, here we go. On to the negative. All right, back in the wire tray. And now this one, let's pop it out. Feed it in the same hole. And then I'm going to have to stand up to get this one. All right, give it a tug. Good. And then I always try to put. So turn it around so the light sits in the back. Now I have the screws that hold this top down. I have them in the bottom of the box. So we've been pretty pretty good about engineering things ourselves. We save a, a tremendous amount of school funding by building these ourselves. This is a about a $500 box if you buy it from the company. Uh, I made this for this box was 20 at Menards. This was uh, off of eBay for 10. That was a $7 switch. I think I got two for $7 off of eBay. And Amazon donated that. So we're pretty happy. All right. Well, that's all of the wiring that I actually wanted to show you. So make sure then that these lay in the tray appropriately. You want to have a lot of slack. And then what we'll do then is that this cover will come over the top and then clean up this real nice. But I'm not going to do that today because we've got a lot of other applications that we're going to do. All right, well, that's about it. Uh, now, this is programmed already because I did it earlier today. And it's all set ready to go. So I think if we start the program, push the green button, so then the menu choices that I have, and we'll show you those menu choices in the second video, uh, what I actually, if I needed to set this up, I'd have to push this down to get the network, hit the green button, and then it would actually give you the IP address of this box. Uh, every, every electronic device that's on the internet has an IP address, and this has one too. So let's go up to the start button. Let's hit the green button. Do I want to start it? Yes. And, well, there you have it. So what's supposed to happen? Well, everything is good to go. We didn't push the e-stop button. We have a clear screen that says safe to operate, and our green light is on. So now let's see what happens. So let's push the e-stop button. Drum roll, please. All right, so what was supposed to happen? Well, we had the light. We switched it over to the red light, and you put the frequency generator on there, and remember that we set it for four tenths of a second on and four off. Here's our horn going off, which we wanted. The logo itself now has the red light in here, and in the text it says uh, emergency stop. So. Looks like to me we did it pretty successful. But the next, like I say, the next thing I just want to do is show you the connections that we made here. Uh, because I set the program into the laptop and then I talked to it through this Ethernet cord. Let's plug that in then. And then we'll show you actually how we get the program off the laptop and set up into the logo to be able to make this work so there you have it ladies and gentlemen we are uh, stick me with a fork because I think I'm done okay